This week on Dirt Every Day, we're concrete crawling at the home of the Jeep, Toledo, Ohio. Little help, Fred. I got you, Dave. We are in Brighton, Michigan at Diversified Creations. Now like a lot of you JK owners, we brought our JK to a shop to get some work done to it. I'm not insulting you and saying that most JK guys don't work on their stuff, but it's true. Most JK guys don't work on their stuff. They just take it to a shop and get some work done. We brought it to Diversified because these guys are known for building all types of cool 4x4s and hot rods and they got a heated shop and we're in the middle of Michigan and it's freezing here. You all right, Dave? I'm cold. Yeah, it's cold here. So we are gonna build this JK. We're gonna put bigger axles, bigger tires. We're gonna work with the guys here at the shop. And then we're gonna take it to Toledo, Ohio. That's the home of Jeep. That's where they've been making Jeeps for 75 some years. And we're gonna see if there's any place in Toledo that we can take our Jeep urban off-road. All right, so we're doing a suspension from JKS. We got brand new springs. We got brand new suspension arms. Check this out. Not only are their parts really clean, their packaging is clean. So there's an adjustable track bar here. There's new drop brackets for bump stops, track bar. So we're gonna put all this stuff on. It's only about a two and a half inch lift because we don't wanna lift the Jeep really tall, but this is a really clean, simple kit that you can put on at home. We got the new Ultimate 60 axles from Dana. These are ready to bolt into the JK. The wheel speed sensors, the locker wiring, everything works. The idea on this is go over kill now and spend your money once. You don't need to be buying two sets of wheels and upgrading those axles when you can put the beef right in it. I didn't just say that. <laughs> There's really no comparing the new 60 to the old 44. We've got larger diameter axle tubes, heavier wall tubing, 35 spline, one ton shafts. One of the best upgrades they do on these is the worn locking hubs. Now you can roll down the road without having all the front drivetrain spinning. It's a custom high pinion center chunk for the front. It's got improved clearance on the bottom and oiling for the pinion gear. Enough of an upgrade that you'll never have to come back and mess with it again. I, I feel like this is, this is a lot of bang for your buck. So we got all the JKS link arms all preset to the stock length. Track bars are set. We kind of got this ready to go ahead of time, so it's going to make short work of getting this lift kit put in. As easy as all this kit is and all these parts are and how you can basically build a hardcore rock crawler with a stock vehicle, makes me almost want to get rid of my trail rig and build a JK for the family. Okay. Got 150 pounds of nitrogen in the shock, so when you cut the strap off of it, you got to get the bolt in there, otherwise you fight it for like a few more minutes. Go. Oh boy. Good work. Boom! The next step on this is going to be to swap the brake lines over to the new calipers. It's pretty impressive the size difference in these things. I mean, this, this setup is definitely designed to stop like a full size truck with some big tires. So, on this little JK, it's going to be incredible. The rear Ultima Dana 60 is a low pinion, full floating axle. The front is a high pinion steering axle. We're running some Curry steering components, a Curry tie rod, Curry drag link. We also have the JKS adjustable track bar. Uh, JKS, it's new flex connector on the sway bar disconnect. Fox steering dampener on the front end. $10,500 for two axles. That's a lot of money, but you're getting much beefier components in factory and pretty much bolts in. There's a few little things here and there, like your, your steering parts you're gonna run. You're gonna want a bigger suspension because you're gonna want a little bit more ground clearance and you're gonna need different wheels in factory. So there's a few additional costs than that, 
but you're ending up with way big beefy parts that will hold up to off-road abuse. So you really shouldn't have to worry about any of the axles underneath the Jeep when you have these sort of upgrades. All right, we're gonna replace the drive shafts in the JQ with brand new drive shafts. This stock shaft has a really large body, which actually hangs down more, makes it more likely to hit rocks. Uh, it's probably really well balanced for running down the highway, but as an off-road drive shaft, not really what you want. This one's really heavy. Here, Dave, let me help you. All right, so this has a 1350 CV at this end, big 1350 joint at this end. This is made by Dana Spicer. This drive shaft is ready to bolt in with their Dana Spicer axles. As the axle tucks up, it's more ground clearance to rocks and off-road obstacles. Here you go, dude. Got this? Thanks. All right. That's it, we're just about done. We're gonna get out of here early tonight. Thanks for all your help. Good morning, day two is getting started on our Jeep JK build. JKs are so easy to put together because if you have the right parts and the right tools and the right guys, these things just literally bolt together. My brother Dave, my brother Daryl, my other brother Dave have been working really hard yesterday. We already had the Dana axles and the JKS suspension underneath the thing. Today we're going to put some rugged ridge accessories on. We got some bumpers and a winch as well as painless performance wiring. So by the end of the day today, we will be just about ready to roll out of here and go play in the dirt. You ready, Dave? I'm ready. Feeling good? No. Dave's catching a cold. Putting some rugged ridge skid plates underneath the transfer case, the transmission, and the engine oil pan. You probably recall in some other episodes of Dirt Every Day where I've driven over things and smashed oil pans and then been stuck out in the middle of nowhere. We're gonna put this on and then we're gonna lower the Jeep down and get the bumpers put on and put our front winch on and start moving up from the bottom. There it is. So we have the bumper, there's the brackets on the frame. The shackles mount through the bumper into the brackets on the frame. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure every bolt is loose so that you can wiggle it around and get it all lined up. So, watch your fingers. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Dave, did this need to go on first? Dave, do you know what this is? Trail rocker, trail, trail rocker. Yeah! This is a trail rocker. It's got all these switches. You can run all of your accessories, electrical and otherwise, off of this. It's super clean from painless, and you just have to mount all this stuff up here. That was so easy, it was painless. <laughs> so this is the Rugged Ridge light bar. It uses three different lights up here, and then there's also a slot here so you can mount side accessory lights, and these will all run off of our trail rocker system. So this is a roof rack of our exo top. It's basically a roof rack that goes on the back of the Jeep and then ties into the B pillar. Put it right down on that rail. Awesome. Firestone MTs have been around for a while. These American racing wheels are brand new. You got two different styles. You can get these tires and wheels from Tire Rack. We're gonna put them on our Jeep and go four wheel. Anything else we're missing, Dave? Uh, no, we just gotta clean up our mess and get out of here. All right, so as soon as Dave's cleaning up our mess, we're gonna get out of here. Hopefully it doesn't snow overnight and we're stuck here in Michigan for the rest of our lives. Why is it so cold today? Okay, we'll be done with this JK in no time. Got to finish putting the top on, bolt the tires on. We got some flares coming and... Paint from the hood shop. Get the hood from the paint shop. Woohoo! We thought we were almost done yesterday, but then we actually went back and read the instructions and we had more work ahead of us. So button up the top, put a hood on it, and we're out of here.
Normally there's a factory flare right here, it kind of wraps down and it actually impedes a little bit of your tire. If your tire went up all the way, it'd probably eat into the flare. Rugged Ridge offers a lot of different types of flares. We got these, which are their flat fender style pocket flares. These will bolt into 99% of the factory holes. We trim the inner fender liner just a little bit so we'll be able to protect the engine from mud and fit our nice big tires. Awesome. Lockers disengaged. Engage highway speed. Hey, check it out, an off-road trail. Perfect. Hey, there's a whole bunch of deer. Lockers are for chumps, as long as you got a sway bar disconnect. Off-road test complete. Copy that. Head to Toledo. All right, next stop, Toledo, Ohio, home of the Jeep for the last 75 years. Welcome to Toledo, Dave. Beautiful here. You ever been to Toledo before? No, never to been here. Toledo's one of my favorite towns. It's been a little bit run down over the years, but it's kind of having a resurgence, and they love, love, love Jeeps. Yeah. And this is the town that built the vehicle that won the big war. Like, mudding is huge here. They even named their baseball team the Toledo Mud Hens. I'm not really sure the whole story. There it is. Old Mud Hen Field? Yep. Dave, I'm going to take you to a place that is an icon of Toledo. What do you got? Coney Island? It's like Coney Island. But instead of Coney Island, it's Tony Island. Tony Paco's Island. This is the home of the world famous Tony Paco's hot dog. Tony Paco's loves Jeep. Let's go get a hot dog. See, Dave? Tony Paco's, best hot dogs in Toledo. Let's go check out some Jeeps. All right. Check it out, Dave. This is where they build Jeep Wranglers. This is where they've been pumping out JKs every day, day and night. Are we going in? No, nah, they're probably not gonna let us in there. But I got a better option. I'm gonna take you to the place where they used to build Jeeps and I think we can go four wheel in there. All right. Downtown Toledo, here we come. Fred. Dave, this is Overland Industrial Park. This is the location of the original Jeep factory. Willie's Overland, this smokestack, is yep. the only part left of the original Jeep factory. And now they're turning it into an industrial park where there's going to be all these buildings and suppliers who are making parts for the new Jeep Wrangler. Pretty cool. We get special permission to go four-wheeling on the industrial park. Most people will never get to do this. And after this is built up, no one will ever get to do it in the future. Well, let's go wheeling. So this is a giant building that Dana's building. We should go check it out. All right. We got to take the doors off, Dave. Fred, turn. No, we're going four wheeling. That's ridiculous. You can't be jeeping with the doors on, Dave. It's Jeepers snowing. don't use doors. Buckle up for safety. Here we go. Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh, boy. 
We're jeeping already. And the cold medicine took oh. over. Ah. This is the Dana facility. Dana's been making axles for Jeeps for like 75 years. Kind of unsafe. Well, you know what? You got our helmets? Of course. <laughs> Boom! Fred, can I stop wearing this silly hat? Yes. We're outside of the construction zone. So this is gonna be giant warehouses where they're gonna make all the stuff for the new Jeeps. Stuff like plasma screen TVs and computers and lasers and all the stuff that new Jeeps are gonna get. Can I drive and tear this field up? Yes, your turn. This is my first attempt at a Rockford. Take one. And whip. And drive! Yeah! Yeah! Rockford! <laughs> Seems like you're working it, Dave. Tear it up over here a little. Pile whoa, 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 Dave. We're urban off-roading. There's probably some sort of woodland creature in there. We'll Smaller find... log pile crawl. Oh boy, here we go. Oh log. boy. Oh. Go, 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 that was awesome! <laughs> Log crawling champions of the world! <laughs> Concrete pile crawling. Let's go over there to the construction site. Let's go up that way, Dave. Rock crawling. Rock, rock crawling. You got the lockers engaged? Yeah, it's going on. Awesome. Get it, Dave, get it. Up there, up there, up there. Oh, keep going, keep going, you got it. Back up. Realign. This is a little more technical than I was ready for. Yeah, you got it. You got this, Dave. You're a pro. Keep going. Perfect, right here. Ah, oh, look at this. So much urban off-roading. I got telephone poles, a big rubble pile full of concrete, some mud bogging. What are you looking at? I smashed the front end. Is it all right? It looks good. Laughed it off. My turn. I'm driving off this cliff. <laughs> I got it. Day in the 60s. Hill climb.
All right, Dave, let's do some power line crawling. This is a bad idea. I'm pretty sure these power lines were used for years, bringing energy to the Jeep factory to, um, to build Jeeps full of freedom. Ready? Yeah. I think we have all four wheels off the ground. Yeah, this one's touching, that one's touching. I have the driver's right front off the ground. You want me to look under? Yeah. We got hung up on the belly like really good there, but it's not so bad that I don't think we can pull off of. Fred's gonna try something different. We're gonna hook up to the power pole we're actually stuck on. The synthetic rope's like the only thing that's not cold. You're just making a choker out of it? Yep. So now it'll choke onto that. Hopefully it will move the Jeep before it drags the pole or drags down the pole. Urban recovery engage. Get in and drive. All right. Go for it. Stop. Good work, Fred. Woohoo! Good job, Dave. Let's go do some other stuff. Think we can drive down then, Dave? Are you serious, Fred? How's it look? It looks bad, Fred. Good little driver if you can. Let's hold it up on this side. It's hung up really bad on the belly and all this old concrete and mud is not, it's not sticking around long enough for it to get traction to pull either forward or back. So we're gonna need to get the camera crew out here to take care of this for us while we go get coffee. <laughs> Oh, that might be it. All right, now everybody get out of the way. Oh, there's that stupid rock that was hanging me up. Yeah, hard passenger. There you go. All right, cool. Passenger. Perfect. Woo! This is just like normal off-roading, but kind of a little sketchier here. All right, we're gonna try and drive up this V-notch. Did you ever bother looking at the other side of this thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh... Oh! Oh! It's like jingle bells, all the rebar. <laughs> I think we got this. Yeah, we totally got it. Oh, come on! Come on, little dude! Yes! What are we getting into? I don't know, but it's awesome. How's this drop-off look? This one's way better than the last few. We'll probably get stuck. <laughs> you might need to just keep it rolling. Okay. There you go. Drive it out. Woohoo! <laughs> Get it. Low bridge. All right, Fred, you keep getting this thing stuck. Let me drive. Oh. My old bones are sore. It's cold out here. Ah. All right, Fred, this is how you do it. Show me. Have you been over this thing yet? No, oh, this looks like an easy one. Awesome. I'll be back. I'm going to go get something warm to drink. Get it! I can tell you're a professional. Looking good, Dave. That's it for Dirt Every Day. We'll see you next time. Wait for me, Dave! 
If you like this episode of Dirt Every Day, you can watch the next episode live right now on MotorTrendOnDemand.com. This week on Dirt Every Day, we're snow racing an avalanche. Get it, Brad, they're on your six. Woo! Woohoo! Watch the latest episode of Dirt Every Day right now on Motor Trend On Demand. We'd like to throw out a special thanks to Rugged Ridge, Painless Performance, um, JKS Suspension, the guys at Diversified Creations, and Dana Spicer for helping us build this Jeep. Special thanks to the people at Jeep that loaned us the Jeep to give us something to go beat around in. And definitely special thanks to the city of Toledo. You guys have a great city. It's really cool that we got to do something most people never get to do. Right here is where Jeeps have been built for 75 years, and we're the first guys to get to go four-wheeling on it. Good times. Thank you.